I've chosen to speak about the making of Moshiach. Uh, we read Miguel Atfus on Shuris, and we know from Rus came Dabar Melech, from Dabar Melech came uh, Moshiach. So, what does it take to be um, the parent of, of Moshiach, to be a Rus? To be a Boaz, um, what does it take? Why do we read Miguel Shuris on, on Shuris specifically? So it's interesting because it's brought down because she was a Giyayre. So she was Makabal the Torah on, um, and therefore Shuris was Makabal the Torah. She was Makabal the Torah. But it's a very big question on that. Yisro was also a Ger. So if we're going to talk about a Ger, why would we talk about Yishma Yisro, Kohen Midyan? Um, who was Moshe Rabbeinu's father-in-law. So why don't we, we're reading anyway in Pasha Yisro, the source of Debros. So why don't we just read the whole Pasha Yisro. You have a gear. Why are you picking out that Rush should be the Giyayris that represents Kabbalah Satara? So there's many different reasons given. One of the reasons is given is Rus, Resh, Vav, Self equals, um, you can take the Resh is 200, Vav is 6, and the Tuf is 400, which is 606. She was Makabel, she accepted 606 mitzvahs because she had already seven mitzvahs b'nei nayach, and therefore, that's why we read Rus. Um, another answer is Rus with a hey. She was Makabel Hashem, and if you say Rus with a hey, also spells the word Torah. So there's many different reasons given why we read Rus, but there are certain aspects of Rus herself that with those midos, those are the midos that a person needs to be Mikhail the Torah. So let's examine Rus and let's examine Boaz, the parent, grand, great grandparents of David and Melech, and the great 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 grandparents of Mashiach ben David. So let's go to the beginning. I think it's very important for everyone who's listening, and that is the word the Dafkabo, that she clung. Dafka comes from a devak, which is glue. And that she was like glued to Naomi. So, Rus and Arpa were Naomi's two daughter in laws. When their husbands died, and their father in law died, Naomi's children died, and her husband died. So, she wanted to send them back. They were both princesses of Moab, and she wanted to send them back to Moab. So, if we look in the Pasuk, um, Pasuk Ches, it says, Vatoyme Naomi. Go back to your mother's house. Hashem will do chesed with you like you did with me. They both said, Arpa and Rus, ki, um, that they, they're, they're, they don't want, they're, not, they're not going back. We're going back with you to Kla Yisrael. They both said it. Arpa and Rus said it together. Again, Naomi says, Shabna Benaisai, what are you going with me for? Am I going to still have children? Um, plus the good base, go back. I'm old, I can't have any more children. But the Santa Carla, plus the good dollar, they raised their voice, but the Pchana Oid, and they cried again, they cried the second time. And here it is this is what makes you the parent of David and Melech of Malchus, and that's why she was called the Emma Malchus. What does she say? But Tishak Arpa Lechamaisa, Arpa kisses her mother in law. And leaves. Rus Dafkabai. Rus did not let go. Now, again, third time. By the time he ne shabi vinte kalama, go back to your nation, third time. By the time Rus al Tifkabi was like, stop bothering me to leave. Ki al shal telchi elech, will you go? I go. Shetalini Olin, will you sleep? I sleep. Amech Ami, your nation is my nation. And your God is my God. Now, let me tell you, everyone who's listening, you have two people who are holding on. And Naomi was able to talk Orpa to go back, which means that Orpa wasn't Dafka boy. She wasn't. Glued, she didn't stick, and she left. And the Medrash says that the night she left, she did a thousand averos with men. 
she left. At one point, her and Rush were at the same place. They said, we're not leaving. They're crying. And then she said, okay, okay, you took me into it. I'm out of here. That night, a thousand, a thousand men, she did a various with, and a dog. The low, she fell to the lowest place a human being could fall. And the one that held on, the one that didn't let go, she became the Imam al She became the, the great-grandmother of David HaMelech. In the Holocaust, there were a lot of people that were very, very challenged, something that none of us who did not go through could even understand. We're going through a crisis right now. We have lost many, many good Jews, but nothing like what they have lost. Six million Jews, families wiped out, children. We, we, we can't, we can understand that. Like people are saying to me, or Wallace, you know, I, I, people are dying in the, in, in the hospital and nobody can visit them and no one's there. People are being buried and it's a small Levi. And I'm like, in the Holocaust, there was no one there. And, and they didn't even know where they were being buried. They were mass graves. So there's no one in this world that could judge anyone who went through the Holocaust. It's not judgeable. And I'm sure they're all in Ghana because they went through Gehenna. And they were the ones, they were called the survivors. And those are our grandparents and great grandparents. And they, they held on, Dafka, but they held on to Hashem. They came to America and to all the different countries. And our generation is built from, from these survivors all the Yiddishkeit, all the learning, all the Dafyaimis, all the Shabbos, all the Minyanim, all the Chesed, everything. It all came from the survivors. And at the same time, they were victims who couldn't hold on. And they're, they're not to be judged. But look at the difference at the ones who survived and built Klai Yisrael and the ones that were victims and, and went off to Derech. So th the same thing happened here. To be the Eim HaMalchus, to be the mother of Mashiach, of hope, of 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 the of kingdom, of royalty, you see the difference between these two. One left, and how far she fell, and one held on. So that's the that's the first important ingredient that a person has to have. But there's a lot more. Let's go a little bit further. So let's look at the father of Moshiach, which which is Boaz. Very beautiful. And I talk about this all the time. Mihine Boaz, Bobby Beis Lechem. Boaz was very old. I think he was 85, maybe 90. He was very old. And he came to his field, to his business. And by Yermel Kaitrim, Hashem Imachem. He said to the harvesters that God should be with you. By Yermel Hashem. And they said back, God should bless you. So we learn from here a very important lesson. Boaz came to his field. He didn't say, um, so what time did you show up today? How much work did we get done? Let me see the production records. No. First thing he said to his workers is, bottom line is, the most important thing to me is that God should be with you. And what did they answer these workers? Wow, with such a boss, Hashem should bless you. So I speak about this to teachers and to people and to parents. And I think it's very important for everyone who's listening today that it's very different when a Rebbe walks in and tells his class, put those papers away. Put your shirt in. Put those potato chips away. Where's your homework? Why aren't you slur them out? Right? If you start your day like that, it's not going to be such a great class. But if you come to school and you say to the boys when you walk in, Hashem should be with all of you today. And they're like, Rebbe, Hashem should bless you. You're going to have an amazing day. And the same thing in families. Um, instead of running to the door when your kid's trying to catch the bus, tuck your shirt in. Where's your briefcase? Where's your homework? Straighten out your yarmulke. Pull up your pants. What's with the socks? I don't understand. What's going on over here? Yeah, your kid goes, goes to school that way. He's going to be all messed up. But if you go to school and you say, Shefullah, Hashem should be with you today. And if you have to guess on the test, multiple choice, Hashem should put the right question, the right answer in your head. And you make sure you eat all your food. And the whole day, Hashem, and he turns to his mother and father and says, Hashem should bless, should bless you, Ma. Right? Or her husband goes to work and she says, God should be with you today. And he turns around to his wife. He says, you should be good bench, Mommy. It's just a different class. It's a different family. It's just, it's just your children will be on the derech. Your students will do amazing. And that's something that we learn from Boaz. 
the father of Malchus. Okay, now, he comes to the field, and he says to the boy that's working there, this is very important, he says, who's that girl? Because Rus was a very, very tsunua. The aim of Malchus of Klayashol has to be a tsunua. She was a very big tsunua. So instead of bending over to pick up the leket, she curtsied to pick up the leket. And Boaz saw this, and Boaz was like, who's that girl? But at that point, the Jewish nation did not agree, did not allow women from Moab, right, to marry into Klai Israel. And we looked at Moab as a very immoral, low-life nation because they came down to the Arabs Moab, as we learned in Pasha Balot, and 24,000 Jewish men died in a plague because of these immoral women and what they did. And they were so immoral that even the king sent his daughter down, of Midian and of Moab. So we didn't like them. Plus, the Torah says that they can't marry into Klai Israel because also they have a terrible midah that they're ingrates. We came by, we asked them for food and water. They said no. Meanwhile, Avraham Avinu saved their great-grandfather Lot's life. So they had two terrible midos. One, no chesed. Two, extremely immoral. So when he asked, this is very important, when he asked the worker, who is this girl? The worker badmouthed her. And what did he say? Who she is? Nara moviahi. She's a guy from Moab. Hashavim the Omi Mistei Moab. She came back with Nami. She was married to the Jewish guy that died. So they really, really badmouthed her. In fact, the Medjah says that when she came and she started collecting Leket, they threw her over the fence. Because they said, you're stealing, you're a guy, you shouldn't be getting Leket. They threw her over the fence. And that's why later on, Boaz tells her, don't worry, nobody will touch you. What do you mean? Why would they touch her? Because last time they threw over the fence. Now, here comes the big one. Pasi. I talk about this to everybody. Now let's know who Boaz was. Boaz was the head of the, he was the Shefei. He was the Gadol Hadar. He was the Rav Chaim of the Dar. He was the Gadol Hadar. Okay? The Gadol Hadar. The main man. The main Gadol Hadar. And here he's meeting a Goyesha girl. What does he say to her? Hello, Shamat Biti. I heard about you, my daughter. Not Biti Balchuva, but Biti, my daughter. Okay, I heard about you, my daughter. I'll tell you, look, look, my father, don't go anywhere else. Okay? And he's really nice to her. And she doesn't understand why would the Gal Hadar call me his daughter? But Tipala Perneha, and she falls on her face. But the Stachbu Otsun, she bows down. But Tom Elov, my dua matasichem beinecha. Why do I find favor in your eyes? Why is the Gal Hadar? Of Chaim calling me BT. And here's a big word. What does it mean to find favor in someone's eyes? So she says, Lahaki Rami, why do you give me recognition? Acceptance. Everyone who's listening to this share, the most important part of parenting is to show your children acceptance. The most important part of being a teacher is to show acceptance. Every human being wants to be accepted. So she says to him, why did you show me recognition? Why did you call me Viti? But I'm a stranger, I'm a guy. So what did Boaz answer? Why? Because you curtsy? Because you're Tznua? No. Bayan Boaz and he said, Who got who got Lee was told to me, he called your sister's that 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 you left your parents' house, your mother's house, the birthplace, Mamash Lechlacha, Avicha, Imech, Eret. Like Avraham Avinu, you left that all. You came to a nation that you don't even know that doesn't even like you. You're in so much pain. You shall Hashem Hashem should pay you for this. So what does that mean? He said to her, "You know why I'm giving you recognition? Because I realize that you're in pain, and I realize how much you sacrificed." And that's what I'm focusing on. I'm not focusing on where you come from. I told my, it's unbelievable, these six psukim. I really do find favor in your eyes. For you have consoled me, which means that you was in a lot of pain. How do you console somebody? You spoke to my heart. What did she say? She says, Rabbi, listen to me. You're focusing on my pain? You're speaking to my heart? You're giving me recognition? 
You call me your daughter? I promise you, Pasuk, I promise you that I will not be a shifcha. I will not be a regular girl. I will become a superstar. Vikachoya. She became Aim Hamalchus. It says by Shlomo Melech, the one that gave him Petch for waking up late to open the base of Mingdash was the Aim Hamalchus. What was the Aim Hamalchus? Rus. Rus lived all the way to Shlomo Melech. She was called Aim Hamalchus. Now comes the finale of what it means to be the father and the mother of Malchus and of Mashiach. So Naomi tells Rus. Now, remember, Rus was a huge snua. She was very modest. Klai did not believe it. They thought she'd put it, she, she's a Moavia. She, it's a bluff. Don't trust her. They did this to us last time. That's why 24,000 died. Don't trust her. It's a bluff. Okay? And they didn't believe her one word. Her mother-in-law tells her, listen, tonight, I want you to go at night to the silo where Boaz is sleeping because he just did the, the week gathering. And I want you to lay at his feet and uncover his feet and tell him that you want him to be your Goel. You want him to do Yibam. No women in those days went out at night. The Gemara talks about a woman out at night meant she's from ill repute. So she knew, Rus, that if someone catches her walking at night, they're all going to say, ha ha, yeah, curtsying in the field. You're a faker. You are a woman of ill repute. Where are you going? She knew if she got caught, she'd be in big trouble. And it brings down that her, she, her mother will told her to put on makeup. And then go, and it says she didn't put on makeup. She went, and then she put on the makeup. Because she's chatz for something, she got caught. But she she went. In the middle of the night, she comes to the Golad door. Can you imagine someone went in B'nai Barak to Rav Chaim's room, and he's sleeping in his bed, and some girl is sitting at his legs and uncovers his feet. I mean, it, it, we, they would hang her. I mean, it, it's crazy, right? But that's what they asked her to do. So she does it. So she does it. Listen to what happens. By the way, there's a very big connection between, we don't have time tonight to talk about it today, but there's a very big connection between Pesach. We know Pesach says Sheva Shavuos, doesn't say the day that Shavuos is going to be. It's just the connection by, the, by counting seven weeks. And we all know that Pesach, what is it? Everything happened? Well, guess what happened? On Shavuos, Pesach, hey, Pesach, Ches, in Perik Dalet, by he, in Perik Dalet, by he, Bechatzi Alayla, by Yechera, the issue, shook, there's a woman at his feet. But Yomer, he says, he doesn't, he doesn't yell, he doesn't scream. What are you doing here? What's going on? No. He asked her a question. Mi'at, who are you? Because he thought maybe she's a shindal, no human being would do this to him. But Tomer, I am Rus, your maidservant, and you are my goyo. Instead of saying, you couldn't come during the day, we can talk about this. You sneak into my room at night and uncover my legs. Like, God should bless you. Biti. Again, my daughter. It's amazing that you're doing this for your mother in law, that you didn't want to marry. And then next, Biti, Altiri, my daughter, don't worry. He always calls her Biti. Don't worry. That I will. I will do whatever I need to do. So first of all, again, he continues with Biti. He also doesn't judge her. He first asks, who are you? He doesn't jump. The, the of HaMalchus is a person doesn't jump to conclusions. Let me ask, who are you? What do you need? What are you doing? Calls her his daughter. Okay. And then, which is I think the most important point, and I have to work on myself with this. And she goes home to he, she goes home to Naomi, and she says, I, "What's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen." But Tommy Mashibi Biti, Naomi says, "Relax. We'll see what happens." Because Le Yishko to Ishki Im Kila Hadover Hayom, he will not rest. He will not rest. Boaz will not rest until the situation is finished. He took on something. This is a man. 
but doesn't procrastinate. He doesn't push things off. I'll call you tomorrow. I'll get back to you in a week. She said, you're not going to have to wait, Russ. The minute he wakes up in the morning, he will take care of it. How do you know he's going to take care of it? Because this man takes care of things extremely and right away. I want to end with this thought. I want to tell you all something fascinating. Russ put everything she stood on on the line, knowing that if she got caught in the middle of the night, that everyone would say she's a faker and she would lose everything. Why did she do this for her mother-in-law? For Yibam. Because Naomi had two sons that died and didn't have children. So this whole thing she did because she Rus was alive and Rus became a Gyarus and she wanted Rus to have a child that would be like Yibam, like her son had a child. Whoever's listening to this share knows there's no din of Yibam by a guy. Rus was not a Jew when she married Naomi's daughter, Naomi's son. So therefore, there was no Kedushin. And therefore, there's no Yibam. So that means that Rus took a chance of losing everything that she came to Klai Yisrael for to do a chesed for her mother-in-law that she wasn't even chayev in doing. The day, the first day of Sfira is chesed she chesed. To have the ingredients of, be, of malchus she malchus, the foundation has to be chesed she chesed. That's the first day. The 49th day is malchus she malchus. The basis of Boaz was biti, was chesed, was recognition, was not judging. The basis of Rus was that she was a tsnua and was an amazing level of chesed that she was willing to lose everything for something that her mother-in-law wanted that wasn't even la halacha real. Those are the parents of Moshiach. That is what we're going towards. Malchus, Sheba Malchus, Rus was Eim HaMalchus. And that's what each one of us has to take all these midos that we spoke about and put that and work on it and get to it, not to judge people, to give recognition. Everyone everyone should be judged like your own child, to be a tsnua, to, to first ask before you decide what you think, to give a bracha when you're in your house, when you're children, before you go to work, in business, to all these attributes of Megillah's Rus. And that's why we read Megillah's Rus, not Yisro, on Shavuos. Because to be a Makabal the Torah, you have to have all these Midos. We should all be Matzliach. We should see the Eim HaMalchus. We should see Dov Machetol Chavikayam. We should see Mashiach from Herib Yemenu together with the Geula, with the Shechina, with Baruchu, in the Beit Hamikdash B'Karay. Thank you for listening. <laughs>